Good evening and welcome to our evening prayer today at St Thomas's on the 25th of April. It's so good to gather together to hear God's word, uh, to worship him, give thanks for his goodness uh, and uh, lift our world and each other to God at this time of pandemic particularly. Uh, so uh, the words that I'll be using that you can join in with uh, will appear on the screen. If you would like to join in, that'd be great. Um, the words that you can join in with uh, particularly are the bold and italic ones. So hopefully they'll stand out for you uh, if you're watching online. But if you'd prefer a natural paper copy, I can still email you that. Uh, if you email me at revgstock at gmail.com, then I can get that to you. Uh, but for now, let's just um, gather ourselves before God. You may like to light a candle or put some quiet mu uh, worship music on in the background uh, just to uh, gather our thoughts before the Lord. Um, but uh, the, the main thing uh, is that we just fix our eyes upon him and uh, remember that his presence is with us. So let's just spend a moment doing that now together. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. At this point we come before the Lord with our day the joys, the difficulties, at the places where we need to receive his forgiveness or perhaps forgive someone else. So let's just uh, offer our day as it has been before the Lord and allow him to speak into it by his Holy Spirit. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Amen. We come now to our psalm, and if you'd like to uh, say the psalm with me, that would be great. Uh, the psalm we'll be using today is Psalm 67, uh, so please do if you have a Bible near you, uh, turn to that. Or likewise, if you have a Bible app that you can look at this psalm with, you can. Um, but you can also just listen and uh, worship God in your heart as you hear these words. So Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine on us, so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. 
May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we come now to our Bible reading and just a thought for us to dwell on today. Um, on our Bible reading it is uh, John 8 verse 12 and it says this. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never dwell in darkness but will have the light of life. Wonder if you've ever experienced a power cut of an evening. During the day, there's something a bit different, aren't they? But when you're sitting, perhaps in your living room, watching TV um, of an evening and the power goes out, just everything goes into darkness. And um, when it's all of a sudden, it can take us by surprise. And uh, we can be fumbling around, perhaps for our phone. I mean, what did we do before then? Try and find where we left a torch or try and strike a match or find a candle uh, as our eyes sort of struggle to adjust um, to the light or lack of it around us. Um, and then you have that moment where the lights flick back on and all of a sudden uh, you're back the other way again from the darkness you're into the light. And uh, in some ways, it's so bright in comparison, it, it takes our eyes just a moment, doesn't it, sometimes, to readjust, because we've been so used to working hard to be able to see in dim light. And um, all of a sudden, there's not a trace of that pitch blackness um, that we once had. You might well, if you've not experienced that one before, um, think of it more as in a cinema. So when you uh, leave the dimly lit or quite dark cinema at the end of watching a film and you walk into the brightness of the foyer, um, there is such a marked difference, isn't there? Your eyes again are struggling to adjust and it almost feels just too bright considering what we've uh, been experiencing for a couple of hours watching a film. And what I guess I, I want us to think about and have in mind is this marked difference between light and dark. And when we remember those kinds of experiences, it helps us to realise that there is this marked difference. I think often if we're not careful, we see this picture just as like a, a nice candle lit um, in a place that isn't too dark. Um, and we can just see the pretty light of the candle. And, and that's the kind of image we can get. And actually, I, I, I think God wants us to remember this, the marked difference between the light and the darkness. Um, and what we're hearing from Jesus is this isn't just a small light um, that might not make too much of a difference. It says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is a big difference. This is reminding us of creation, where God spoke into nothing and created. Spoke into darkness and there was light. And it is that much of a marked difference. And actually God is reminding us of the brightness of the light of Jesus compared to the dark. It says something to us that is powerful. It says something to us about the darkness that we see around us in the world, in different things that are happening, maybe in different people sometimes. Um, but often sort of there's powers and principalities the Bible tells us are behind some of the darkness in the world. Is a there's something more that goes on and we sense it. You know, we sense injustice. We sense darkness as sin. You know, when you think about things like the Holocaust or when you think about um, uh, someone being abused, these things are the darkness. 
And even the darkness within ourselves, often we stop there and we assume the darkness is just out there and we're absolutely fine because we don't do anything near as bad as that. But we have our own darkness in our hearts where we choose to hate, where we choose to gossip, where we choose uh, perhaps to it, uh, you know, exaggerate something. Uh, all humankind contributes to the sin and darkness of the world. And you see it in the Bible that um, there were leaders of the people of God who they weren't alone responsible for what had happened in the land where people had turned away from God and began to uh, sin against one another and against him. But they still, uh, as a people, needed to take responsibility. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, uh, and that's what uh, Romans tells us. But beyond that, beyond our darkness, there's a different darkness um, that the enemy is responsible for as well. So that helps us to understand what darkness is, I think, because often we think, well, what's, what's that all about? I think that's um, for us to consider about what the darkness is. And then the light is pretty simple. It is God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And in this case, speaking specifically about Jesus and the role that he had in bringing light to the darkness. He was sent by God to light up this darkness, to destroy its power. Because at the beginning of John, this gospel, it says, and you might remember this from some Christmas services you might have been to in the past. It says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it or understood it in other translations. And then it goes on to speak about um, Jesus um, taking on flesh, uh, God becoming human and uh, dwelling amongst us. Um, it says in the message translation, moving into the neighbourhood. Um, and there's something about Jesus coming in that brings the light of God into a dark world in a different way. Not that God wasn't present before or at work, but Jesus came to destroy the power of that darkness. And there is much in this that is about Jesus bringing light in terms of truth as well. And um, when you turn a light on, you suddenly see what things actually are. Um, I don't know if you ever had this as you were a child, um, if you woke up in the middle of the night having a bit of a nightmare and you sort of open your eyes and everything's a bit dark and perhaps you saw something in your room that you thought was a monster or thought was something like a ghost or something and then you turn the light on and you see oh actually it's not it's a coat or actually it's this that the other um, and it's a similar kind of thing again the light brings truth the light brings clarity to what is actually there and um this is what Jesus was doing. He wanted to show what God was like and he wanted to show the truth of what was in our hearts because we all needed to know God's forgiveness and mercy as human beings. And when we look at this verse that we heard um, about Jesus saying he's the light of the world, this literally comes straight after um, this woman coming before Jesus because the Pharisees have dragged her there. This woman caught in adultery and the Pharisees seize this opportunity to try and test how Jesus will respond because she clearly has done wrong in the eyes of God's law. And they see it as this perfect opportunity. What will he do? Will he uphold the law? Uh, how will he respond in such a way that might trap him and also just, uh, I guess, uh, lays their sort of issues to bear on this woman and her sin that is obvious um, and Jesus brings light to the situation he doesn't just see her sin he sees the sinfulness of humanity and the people that are standing there and um, he says to them you know you you know you're right to say that there is a punishment due here but whoever is without sin can cast the first stone and he just spends time 
writing in the sand. Nobody knows exactly what. It could have been the sins, some of the sins that he knew about that were in their hearts. It could have been anything, scriptures perhaps. We don't actually know. Um, but one by one they leave. And he doesn't say to her, well, that's okay. Your sin's not a problem. But he does say, go and sin no more. And this is what he um, came to do, was shed the light, um, not just spotlighting on you know, one person, but spotlighting on the problem in humanity that he was coming to deal with because he was the light for the whole world. He died and was risen for the purposes of destroying the darkness for the whole world so everybody could have that chance um, of forgiveness with him, that hope. I wonder if there are parts of our lives, our hearts, that we would prefer would stay hidden. I wonder if there are things that we uh, would worry about truth coming to light there. All of us, I think, would probably say, if we're honest, that we have things that we'd rather other people didn't know about. Things that perhaps we've done in the past, that we've regretted, ways in which we've hurt other people, perhaps things we'd wished we'd done to stand up for someone else who was in trouble. There are all sorts of things that uh, perhaps we have hidden away. And yet Jesus comes to bring light to that situation. Not like the Pharisees did in front of everybody, but to shine a light on it to show what it is. So we're not waking up in the night going, well, what is that? Jesus shows it for what it is so that we can be restored to him, so that we can realise we need his forgiveness as much as anybody else. And because we then need it, we can turn to him and receive forgiveness and new life. So today, I hope we're encouraged by this word that Jesus is the light of the world and that we can walk in the light of life with him. That he came to show us this difference between light and dark. Let's not convince ourselves, uh, if we were doing this, that oh, the dark that is around isn't too bad. The dark is dark, but the light is light. Jesus um, is the kind of light that the darkness cannot stand up to. He's not a small candle flickering, making a tiny bit of difference. He is the light that lights up the whole world to show what is and what isn't. And when we remember this difference, we realise that the darkness can't stand up to it. That when Jesus forgives us, he forgives and it takes away um, the shame um, and the consequence uh, in terms of our life in the future. It might be we still need to work out consequences here on earth with him and he helps us to do that. But it means that no more do we live in the darkness of it. We live in the light and the truth of his goodness. So be reminded that when we, we are invited to say yes to him, to this light, we're invited to say yes to following him, to receiving his forgiveness. And let's be reminded that this light trumps the darkness every time. That even when the dark seems really, really dark and really, really scary, it flees when you switch on the light. When Jesus comes, it flees. Jesus has overcome that darkness by his rising. May we stand firm in that truth. Receive him, receive that light and forgiveness and live in it. May we shine with his light and his life. Let's pray. Lord God, we're sorry for the times when we have relegated Jesus to being a candle in a room rather than the light of the whole world. 
And Lord God, we ask that you would reveal yourself to us in the presence of Jesus. Open our eyes, open our minds, help us to encounter Jesus as the light of the world in our lives. And may we be changed in that truth today and throughout the days ahead. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we uh, continue in prayer, please do. Um, oh, it's had a thing again. Sorry. Occasionally, I accidentally. It's very sensitive. Uh, occasionally, I accidentally touch it a little bit too quickly, and it moves it way on. So please do. Um, Comment with your prayers and prayer requests in the comment section uh, so we can pray together. Um, it's not just uh, for me to pray it out loud. I may or may not see it. So uh, depending on how well my live feed is, is working. Uh, so please do comment also for the benefit of we can see what each other are praying and we can join in and stand with you in those prayers. Um, so uh, let's just spend a moment whether it be um, your prayers out loud where you are, your prayers in your heart where you are, comments, uh, God will hear them. Let's just spend a moment remembering that Jesus, the light of the world, is here present with us. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, whether that be in body, mind or spirit. And we especially remember those who are grieving loss at this time. And we remember that your everlasting arms are outstretched to enfold and hold those people safe who are on our minds. And in this time, please do name before God, out loud or in your heart, in the comments, those who you know at this time need his healing touch. And we particularly pray for those who have uh, survived the coronavirus, who are still recovering, and we give thanks for their healing and for those in the NHS who have been part of that. And we pray for their continued recovery and ongoing health. For all those we have named before you, Lord Jesus, would you comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. And merciful God, we also lift to you those who work in the NHS, caring professions, key workers, and we particularly think of those who are waste and recycling collectors at this time. Often their job 
uh, is taken for granted and we especially are grateful for them at this time. We thank you for them, for the work that they're doing and pray that they would know gratitude and care, that they would know protection. And perhaps there are some key workers that are on your mind at this time who you might like to name before God. Let's do that together now. Lord Jesus, may they know your strength, presence and provision, particularly at this time. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we also pray for the world at this time. Pray for our government as they lead and respond to this pandemic. May they remember those who are vulnerable and be compassionate in their leading. May they have wisdom in their response. And we also might have countries around the world, situations here that we would like to lift to God. Let's just lift the nations to the Lord where we are now. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, we bring before God ourselves, our friends, neighbours, families, loved ones, those whom we live with, our very homes before the Lord. Let's just spend a moment lifting our prayers to him. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we close our prayers together, let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we do thank you for joining us this evening in our prayers. We'll be praying again at 7pm tomorrow, so please do continue to join us 
uh, and uh, we thank you for your comments and your prayers. Let's continue to pray for one another and we're going to finish with uh, some worship together uh, which is a worship song called Tremble by Mosaic. If you search it on the YouTube you should find it but I'm also going to post the link on Facebook so you can go straight to it. And again, continue to comment with words of prayers or thanks or praise to God uh, and engage with one another. That's really great. But as we close our prayer time together, uh, please do look out for each other uh, and uh, look after yourselves and stay safe. And these are our final words of blessing as we finish our time together. In peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and good night. <laughs>